So I'm Richard Kukru, and I am the president and CEO of Gosnold, and I have been here, will have been here three years uh, this April. I'm Beth Focarelli. I'm Chief Operating Officer for Gosnold, and I joined the organization in 2016. We had a, a wonderful event, a board appreciation event in, um, around the holidays, and it really gave us an opportunity to acknowledge champions for the organization. And we acknowledged uh, C.H. Newton, David Newton, and his son Ryan Newton, who have been longtime supporters, really invested in a lot of our facilities, have done much work at our Emerson House facility. And so we honored them for their years of dedication to Gosnold. And we also had the family and friends champion, and that was Tony and Jane Daddario. And uh, they unfortunately lost their son, Brendan, to the disease of addiction. Since that time really transformed that experience into something amazingly positive for Gosnold. And they have Team Brendan that runs in the Falmouth Road Race each year, and they have raised upwards of more than $50,000 over the last few years, and it fully supports scholarships for people who can't afford services, and so their scholarship um, helps people move through um, the continuum of treatment. And then we had a, 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 new, a new award called the Rising Star, and that was for the 24 Auto Group, and this is a new, new supporter for Gosnold, and uh, 24 Auto Group donated a Jeep to our Legacy Gala last year, and it was um, an immensely popular addition to our event. And so they have since um, kind of joined the folds of our family here and really actively support. And so the Board Appreci Appreciation event was just a, a space and time to bring people together to celebrate those contributions and to express our appreciation. With Beth's arrival here, I think there's been a huge focus on our community partnership. So that's been, that's been a, a wonderful addition for Gosnold, and I think that we incredibly value our community partners, and I think that these awards have been a, an example of that. It's impossible for us to do what we do day in and day out without the, without the commitment and the, uh, our partners in the community. Uh, and that can be uh, residents of the community, but also the businesses out there. Um, they've been tremendously supportive uh, and a big part of what we do day, day in and day out. One thing I've noticed about our community partners is that Gosnold has really always been very connected to the community and has always looked to the community for opportunities for them to invest in innovations that aren't typically funded through our insurance, typical forms of payment, insurance payments. And so we typically go to foundations like the Tower Foundation, um, Cape Cod Healthcare has been a supporter. Huge support. Eastern Bank, Cape Cod Five. So there's a lot of um, uh, these organizations in the community that have invested in very particular initiatives at Gosnold that have really put us at the pioneering um, part of, of the work that we do. And we've really, through some of those partnerships, we've led the way in recovery coaching. Recovery coaching now is very common in the Commonwealth. It's actually on the governor's agenda. It's, it's made its way up into the state levels. Gosnold pioneered that several years ago, and it was through community partnerships, through investments in the community, um, recognizing that the value, the value that coach, coaching brings to people and investing in those initiatives. So I think in some ways those partnerships also help us to grow our services and to do things that might not otherwise be possible. Exactly right. So, you know, we have uh, um, patients who are in long-term recovery embedded in emergency rooms throughout Southeastern Mass and on Cape Cod. And um, that was another initiative that Pi uh, Gosnell pioneered many years ago. Uh, and it's been uh, incredibly successful in bringing patients into treatment, patients who have difficulties navigating the healthcare system. We see Gosnold as a behavioral health organization, not an addiction treatment center. Um, and I think that even though it historically has been, uh, it was created to treat the addiction population, we know that you can't treat addiction without treating the potential underlying behavioral health component to that. Um, since my arrival, we have been really focused on dual diagnosis, and that has been a huge focus for Gosnold going forward, both in our inpatient and our outpatient services. Uh, and we have begun to embed those uh, that, uh, that uh, diagnostic piece and treatment into our programs. Um, primarily, we still treat addiction. I mean, we, we have a, a, a full-service detox facility. We have a full-service rehab facility in Katomet. Um, we have <coughs> residential components 
at both Miller and Emerson, uh, gender specific. Um, we have um, the services, outpa a full array of outpatient services with eight outpatient sites and two new sites probably coming online this fall. Um, in addition to our uh, um, sober living services. So, you know, we, we are, like I said to you before, we are very focused on the continuum and we are very proud of the things we do, um, including our coaching services, our ER navigation, our OD intervention services uh, out there, and um, um, our MAT services, and anything new that we have piloting coming down the pike. I mean, there's, we're always looking for ways to, um, to embed ourselves in the community, but also figure out ways to treat this addiction. You know, we're currently in 57 schools. That's a school program that started three years ago, four years ago, 2015, with a grant at 17 schools, um, and that's grown to 57. And it, we actually capped it at 57. I mean, I think the plan is to be 70 by the fall. Mm -hmm.